average or expected value of a random variable. So for a discrete random variable, expected value is, so let's do insert equation. So we can denote it by E of X. <clears throat> so the variable is X. So discrete for a discrete random variable X, expected value, it's the summation of X FX. So where f of x is the probability function of x. Here, f of x is the probability function of x. Okay, so let's see how we calculate in practice. So we are given X values and FX values. So summation of X FX means you multiply the X value with the corresponding FX value and then add all these values up. So in this case, we will have zero times, 0.45 plus one times 0 0.31 plus two times 0 0.17 plus three times 0 0.05 plus four times 0 0.02. This comes out uh, 0 0.31 plus 0 0.34, 0 0.65 plus 0 0.15, 0 0.8 plus 0.08. So I get 0 0.88. So same thing here, summation XFX. So X is going zero, one, two, three in this case. So we can even uh, make a table. So zero, so we have the X values, zero, one, two, three. And we can make a column for F of X. So F of zero would be, Three combination zero, one fifth power zero, and four fifths power three minus zero. So this comes out to be four fifth power three. So that'd be 64 by 125. And similarly, F of one would be. 3, 1, 1 fifth power 1, and 4 fifth power 3 minus 1. So 3 combination 1 is 3, so times 1 fifth is 3 fifths, and this is 4 fifths squared, so 16 over 25, and times 3 fifths would so be 48 over 125. Similarly, f of 2, 3c2, 1 fifth square, 4 fifth, 3 minus 2. So 3c2 is 3, and 1 fifth square is 1 over 25, and this is 4 over 5. So 12 over 125. 
and at x equals three, it would be three C three, one fifth power three, and four fifth power three minus three. So this would be one over 125. And then we multiply the X value with the corresponding FX value to get the expected value, one times 48 by 125, plus two times 12 by 125, plus three times one by 125. So, this would be 48 plus 24 is 72 plus 375 by 125. And it goes by 25 three times, 25 five times, so three fifths. So they say integer rounded to three decimal places, so that is 0.6. Okay, a coin is tossed such that a head is five times more likely, <laughs> head is five times as likely to occur as the tail. Find the expected number of tails when this coin is tossed twice. So let's open a new. Okay, so the head so this is not a normal coin where head and tail have equal probability. Here they say head is five times as likely to occur as a tail. So probability of head is equal to five times probability of tail. Okay, so now head and tail are the only two options in this experiment so probability of head plus probability of tail has to equal one as it does in any probability experiment sum of all the possible probabilities is one in a discrete case so that means that probability of head plus now probability of tail uh, probability of head can be replaced by five times probability of tail plus probability of tail is equal to one. So that means six probability of tail equals one. You divide by six, so you get probability of tail is one sixth. So probability of head is five times that. So that'd be five six. Okay. So since probability of tail is one sixth in a single toss, so the expected number of, so it means if you toss it one once you expect to get one over six of a tail although in practical terms it makes no sense but long-term probability of getting a tail is one sixth so in two in two tosses expected number of tails would be two times one sixth. So that is one third. So um, this can be uh, more easily understood if you have more uh, everyday numbers. So let's say that uh, in each attempt, you expect to win $5. So then, in two attempts, you will ex you will uh, be expected to win two times five is equal to ten dollars. So in this case, we are saying that in each attempt, the probability in each toss, the probability of getting a tail is one sixth. So the expected number of tails in two tosses would be two times one sixth. So two times one sixth is one third. And they say uh, decimal rounded to two decimal places, so one third is 
Okay. So let's open a new one for this. In a gambling game, a woman is paid 11 if she draws three or queen and 12 if she draws a jack or four from an ordinary deck of 52 cards. If she draws any other card, she loses. How much should she pay to play the game if the game is fair? So expect uh, so winning amount let's say it's x so you could win $11 or you could win $12 and probability Okay, so probability of winning $11 is the same as probability of drawing a three or a queen. So let's find the probability of a three or a queen. So probability three or queen by our addition rule will be probability of a three plus probability of a queen minus probability three and queen. Now there are four threes. So four over 52 is the probability of getting a three. And there are four queens. So four over 52 is the probability of getting a queen because there are 52 total cards. And there is only, uh, and uh, okay, there is no card which is both three and queen. So basically that's zero. And so 4 over 52 plus 4 over 52 is 8 over 52. Okay. So that simplifies to um, 2 over 13. Or we can leave it as 8 over 52 since eventually we have to change it into decimals. Okay. And then she wins $12 if she draws a jack or a four. So jack or a four will also have the same probability. There are four jacks and there are four fours and there is no overlap. So that'd be also eight over 52. And now the expected winning amount would be as usual, be the 11 times eight over 52 plus 12 times eight over 52. So expected winning E of X the 11 times eight over 52 plus 12 times eight over 52. And let's see, this is 88 plus 96. One, 184 over 52. Okay, so let's calculate it as a decimal. Three point five four. Nearest cent means you give the dollar and the cents, so three point five four. So the question was not what the expected winning amount is. What we calculated is the expected winning amount. The question was that how much should she pay to play if the game is fair? Now expected values are the same as average, but they are referred to when we're talking about a long-term average. So what that means is that if you play this game over and over under these conditions, you expect to win 3.54 per game on average in, in the long run. So let's say you play this game 100, 100 times, then you're expected to win $354 in this game because our calculations are telling us that you're expected to win 3.54 per game. So uh, 3.54 uh, is the expected winning amount if you play this game a lot of times. So since that is what you expect to win per game, so that is a fair price for the game. 
$3.54. You shouldn't pay more than that. Otherwise, overall, you would be losing money in this kind of a game in the long run. Okay, so the same thing here. Let's draw a new one. By investing in a particular stock, a person can make a profit in one year of 4,100 with a probability 0.4. So let X be the profit and F of X be the probability. So you can make a profit of 4,100 with a probability 0.4 or a loss of 1,000. So since X is the profit, so if we're calling X as profit, so a loss of 1,000 would be a negative profit of 1,000, negative 1,000, and that is probability 0.6. So what is the expected gain? So E of X would be again summation XFX as usual. equals 4100 times 0.4 minus 1000 times 0.6. So let's see, what is this? That is 1640 minus 600. So that is 1040. Okay. 